Okay, so an electron is constrained to move along the axis of a ring of positive charge. So here's our ring of positive charge. Here's its axis, z-axis, which is coming out of the center of the ring. Um, if we put an electron right in the center of this ring and displays it very slightly from center, we want to know what frequency that electron will oscillate with back and forth through the center of the ring. So the first thing we want to do is find the electric field along the z-axis, because that will tell us the force on the particle. So we're going to have to, you know, this is not a point charge, it's a um, uniform charge distribution with total charge Q. So we're going to have to integrate the field. So let's just start by considering a piece of the field from this point right here. So this is a little, um, a little dq. It's a little piece of charge. And that little piece of charge will produce an E field at this point. So this is some arbitrary point along the z-axis in this direction. So that's little de due to dq. Uh, that's supposed to be parallel to this dashed line, but you get the idea. Now, this is a vector, and all of the little pieces of dq around this circle will produce a little vector. But for every dq I have on one side of the ring, there's a dq on the other side that produces a little de vector whose component parallel to the z-axis will cancel with this one. So do you see that? So the, the component in the, in the x-y direction here, so let's see, this component is going to cancel with this component. And that will happen all the way around the ring. So we're only going to get contributions in the z-direction. And the contribution in the z-direction is going to be, well, it's going to be so DE is K DQ over R squared. But in the Z direction, we're just going to multiply this by cosine theta, if this is theta, to get this component of the E vector. And we're going to have to do that the whole way around the ring. So can we get cosine theta in terms of um, other variables. So, let's see. Um, so this length, so little r, is equal to the square root of z squared plus r squared. And that means the cosine of theta is um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be, so the adjacent length is z, and the hypotenuse is little r. So this will be z over z squared plus r squared square root. So if we substitute that in here, we have k dq over little r squared will just be z squared plus r squared. And cosine, cosine theta is z over z squared plus r squared to the 1 half. And that's going to be dEZ is K times Z. DQ is um, lambda times dS, where S is a little um, a little length along the, the ring. And that's going to be divided by z squared plus r squared to the 1 plus a half is 3 halves. Now, s doesn't depend on z. So when we integrate this, um, and we integrate s, that's just going to give us from 0 to 2 pi r, 2 pi r, that's just going to give us um, this total length because all of these little dqs are located at the same distance from this point here, and that distance is z squared plus r squared, square rooted. So this will just give us um, k times 2 pi
pi r lambda z over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And 2 pi r times lambda is just q, because this is the um, charge density, so charge per unit length times the length just gives charge. So that means that the E field in the Z direction is just KQZ over Z squared plus R squared to the 3 halves. So if the electron is only displaced slightly, That means that we have a small value of z, or z is a lot less than r. So if z is a lot less than r, then I can Taylor expand this and show that ez is about equal to kqz over, so take z squared to 0, that's r squared to the 3 halves. which is just KQZ over R cubed, close to the ring. So now we need to try to remember how to find the oscillation frequency. So if you think back to PS2, we did that by writing down a differential equation for the position. So we need to sum the forces on the electron, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the electron times the acceleration of the electron. And the acceleration of the electron in the z direction is just d squared z by dt squared. And the force is q on the electron times the field. So q times ez is me d squared z by dt squared. So now this becomes K, charge on the electron, charge on the ring, over R cubed times Z is Me d squared Z over dt squared. Now I'll bring this all the way over to the left um, and divide through by Me. So now we have d squared Z by dt squared minus kqeq over mer cubed times z. And this equation should look very familiar. So the solution to these equations, to this, to this differential equation, is a, um, a, um, a cosine or a sine. And the frequency that goes with that function get from this term, and if you think back, this is actually omega squared. So this is the frequency um, squared that you get in the, you get cosine omega t as one of your solutions. And this is omega squared, so that means that omega is the square root of k q e times q over m e r cubed. That's it.